Cigna reports are a little better than worthless. That's how, back in 1934, Arthur Brayton, W2BSR, described the method used by amateur radio operators for reporting and describing the quality of signal over the air. Terminology was inconsistent and the values had little to no meaning. Brayton set out to fix this and in October of 1934, QST published an article titled A New Standard System of Reporting Signals. If you didn't get the point, the subheading read, Use the RST System. With that said, we're going to explore signal reports with a brief history and how modern signal report is given and received. We'll talk about some of the issues in making reports and I'll wrap it up by demonstrating in the field a diverse selection of received signals. You can play along and see if you make uh, the same signal reports that I did. So why do we do it? Well, since the earliest days of ham radio, a signal report was the standard part of your communications transmission. Most everything was home built back then, and the early hams wanted to know how their systems were performing. Early methods were complex and not very accurate. At that time, most of the traffic was in CW, so a consistent method of signal reporting was desired. In 1934, Art Brayton, W2BSR, wrote in QST Magazine an article titled A New System of Reporting Signals. This was the first mention of what was then the revolutionary RST system. RST may sound familiar to you as we still use this system today. Uh, Brayton really wanted to simplify the process and felt in amateur operation the main characteristics of a signal are readability, signal strength, and tone for CW operation. The scales would be accurate and would well describe the problem with a signal. So instead of assigning meaningless uh, values, uh, the paper in 1934 brought things together and with the buy-in by the ARRL and uh, foreign operators, it gained favorable acceptance and is still in use today. So how does the RST system work? Our modern signal reporting is still based on readability, signal strength, and tone for CW operation. I like to break signal reporting into two aspects, the subjective and the objective. The first part of a signal report, readability, is subjective. It ranges from a scale of one to five, with one being unreadable and five being perfectly readable. This, things that affect readability may be the signal to noise ratio or relative signal strength to the background noise, interference, either QRM or QSB, and whatever else is mixing with that received signal. Uh, the bands could be noisy, but if you can perfectly understand the other station, you might give them a five. The bands might be super quiet, but if the signal is barely breaking the noise floor, they may get a two or three. It's totally subjective. What matters is that you give out a report based on how well you understand the other station. Moving on to signal strength. This is the objective part of a signal report. Back in the early days when W2BSR introduced the RST system, signal strength was a perceived value of loudness because receivers didn't have signal meters. And if they did, they probably didn't correspond to some universal scale. Originally, you'd give a signal strength reading of one to five with one being faint and five being strong. Uh, with the introduction of S meters, strength was expanded to values from one to nine, with one being very faint and nine being very strong. Uh, with modern transceivers, we have very accurate meters to ascertain the strength of a signal. So the strength value of the RST system now corresponds to the levels of your transceiver's S meter. The S meter on your transceiver has a scale of one to nine, with a plus 20 and a plus 40 decibel overflow. You can give a pretty definite measure of strength uh, by reading the values on your S meter. Historically, as evidenced in this 1982 issue of Ham Radio Magazine, uh, it was assumed that a 50 microvolt from a signal generator applied to a receiver would result in an S9 signal. Each S unit drop would cut that voltage in half or six decibels in power, dropping from, say, an S9 to an S8. What this means is that an S1 signal would be 2.2 microvolts, and each step from S1 to S2 and so forth doubles the voltage and increases the power by six decibels. 
the entire scale from S1 to S9 is 48 decibels change or receives strength voltage from 0.2 microvolts to 50 microvolts. But there's a problem. Your transceiver's S meter can be affected by RF gain, your preamp, AGC or automatic gain control, and any receive filtering. Uh, turn your gain down and the S values will drop. Turn the gain up and they increase. Engage the preamp and your S meter scale jumps. All these settings can influence your S meter and in turn the signal reports that you're giving to others. You are no longer measuring raw microvolts of signal coming into your receiver, but instead the perception of signal based on your transceiver's processing capability. Another issue is these meters may not be linear in scale and may skew uh, very weak or very strong signals. The stronger the signal, the more accurate the, the report on the meter. Uh, Larry Peterson, WA9TT, demonstrates this in his online article that shows with a variety of receivers, the weaker the signal, uh, the less sensitive the meter. Anecdotally, I've often felt that this is the case, and I frequently hear very loud stations that may only show up as an S1 or S3 on the meter. In those cases, I have no problem giving a higher signal report than what the meter indicates. Which brings me to my point of the arbitrary nat nature of signal reports. Even with the objective nature of the S meter, the values may be over or understated, or we may not rely on what the meter says at all. Instead, just go by ear. Giving accurate signal reports has always been an issue, even in the earliest days of ham radio. Uh, paging through back issues of QST, it's not uncommon to find a letter, article, op-ed, uh, or something else about the poor quality signal reports, or bemoaning contesters and their exchange of 5.9, good luck in the contest. You know, I don't think that is going to change anytime soon, though. As Parks on the Air participants, both activators and hunters pride themselves in giving accurate signal reports. That's probably one of the shining points of the program. Giving an accurate signal report isn't difficult. Use your ear and watch the meter. Even though the RST system is based on what your S meter says, the values are all relative based on your transceiver settings and your perception to the received signals. If you think a signal is strong, well, give them a strong report. If it sounds weak, well, don't feel bad if you hand out a low RST number. So let's head out into the field, make some contacts, and give out a few signal reports. We're out here at the Plover River Fishery and State Wildlife Area. I've got the performer antenna, Greg KJ6ER's POTA performer antenna deployed. We're set up on the 20 meter band and we're about ready to make some contacts. Uh, well, as I make those contacts, take a look at the signal reports. Uh, let me know if you think that those are accurate signal reports, if I should be doing better, or, if it, or does it really matter at all? Kilo 7, Sierra Echo November. Kilo 7, Sierra Echo November, beautiful, 5-9 into Wisconsin, U.S. 10054, back to you. Yes, well, good afternoon, Michael. You're also 5-9 in Arizona, which is unusual today with the band conditions. Thanks a bunch, 73 and have fun. Yeah, roger that. I'm hoping the bands are improving because they've been in, they've been a mess the last couple days, so thanks a lot for the contact. 7-3, take care. Kilo Bravo 9, Victor Bravo Romeo, parks on the air. Here is it. November 4, Alpha Charlie 1, Lima Lima, park to park. Uh, the November 4. November 4, Hotel Foxtrot Echo. November 4, Hotel Foxtrot Echo, way down there, 3-3, three, three, Wisconsin, U.S. 10054. Back to you. November 4, Hotel Foxtrot Echo, do you copy? QSL, you are 5 2 into Huntsville, Alabama. All right, hey, thanks a lot for the 5 2. You have a great day, 7 3. 73. And I heard a park to park station. Yeah, Alpha Charlie 1, Lima Lima. Park to park. Okay, I got two of them Alpha Charlie 1, Lima Lima, a nice 5 7 Wisconsin, two parks. U.S. 10054 and U.S. 4238. Back to you. Um, you're a nice 57 into U.S. 7150 in Mike Echo. Over. All right. Hey, thanks for the 7150. You have a great activation today. Thanks a lot.
Seven three. The other park to park. November two, India Golf Whiskey. Your five nine here in New York. Park number five zero four eight. USL. All right, November two, India Golf Whiskey. Thanks for the five zero four eight. You're um, you're fading, coming in at a five one here into US one zero zero five four and US four two three eight. Back to you. Hey, you too. You have a great activation, 7-3. Uh, Kilo, Bravo 9, Victor, Bravo Romeo, Parks on the air. Here is it. Whiskey Alpha 2, Whiskey 4, Whiskey Charlie Delta, Bravo. Kilo. Kilo Alpha 4, Bravo Alpha Bravo, QRP. Is that Kilo Oscar 4, Bravo Alpha Bravo? Uh, negative, negative. Kilo Alpha 4, Bravo Alpha Bravo, KA4, BAB, QSL. Kilo Alpha 4, Bravo Alpha Bravo, got you now. 5 1 Wisconsin, US 10054. Back to you. USL Michael, I got you about a 5 7 down here in Tango November. I'm on the POTA performer with 5 watts. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the Tennessee. Yeah, we're also running the performer at about 50 watts. So um, uh, you're doing good. You're doing great with the performer today. Park to park, park to park. The park to park station. Whiskey One, Bravo Delta Lima, gotcha now. 5 3 Wisconsin, two parks, US 10054 and US 4238. Back to you. Roger, Roger, sir. I got you 5 7 around the QRM. US 0882, 0882. Jim in Connecticut, QSL. Roger the 0882 in Connecticut, and uh, you have a great activation today. 7-3, take care. Kilo Bravo Niner, Victor Bravo Romeo, parks on the air. Here is that. Whiskey Zero, Kilo Victor Alpha. Whiskey Zero, Kilo Victor Alpha, nice 5-7 into Wisconsin, U.S. 10054. Back to you. Roger, Roger, you're a nice 5-7 into Charlie Oscar this afternoon. All right, hey, thanks a lot for Colorado today. You have a great day in 7-3. Was that Kilo Charlie 4 Zulu Uniform Alpha? Roger the 55 five, uh, Florida. You are G Georgia, excuse me, 55 five, Georgia. You are way down there, 2222 two, two, Wisconsin, US 10054. Back to you. Hey, you, thanks a lot. You too, you take care and 7-3. Oh, wow. 37 phone contacts, uh, 20 meter bands. The band is, wow, it is, it is rough. <laughs> if we didn't have the performer antenna set up, it would definitely be a whole nother story here in the park. Uh, but um, signals, deep fades all over the place. Uh, if you um, listening to these signals and their signal reports, what, sig what kind of signal reports would you give? Um, you give it at the peak, do you give it at the worst, or do you give it somewhere in between, or just make a guess by, based on how it sounds? Um, I guess that's part of the reason why signal reports, they really don't hold a whole lot of weight. I mean, you got the objective, what, whatever the S meter says, but that subjective part of the quality of the tone of the signal, it's just, all over the place. So, um, I don't know, you know, it's, um, do what you feel is right. You know, when it comes to signal reports, if you think if somebody's strong, give them a strong signal report. If they're way down in the weeds and it's a struggle, let them know that. Uh, the great thing about POTA parks on the air is that, um, people like to give accurate signal reports and people sort of expect and welcome accurate signal reports. So for a variety of reasons, be it, you know, they want, they're testing, you know, they want to know how their transceiver's working. They want to know how their antenna setup is performing and things like that. So do the best you can. You know, if, if you have, if, if you really need to, you know, if they're asking for an honest signal report and you, um, and you didn't see what the S, what the meter said, you know, go, you know, ask for a second go around so you can get, get a better reading on what the meter said to give them something concrete. But otherwise, you know, it's, 
most of the time I'm just playing it by ear and um, strong signal, strong signal report, weak signal, weak signal report, and then a medium signal, you know, a solid 5-5 five, five is always, always good. So um, questions, comments, uh, let me know. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you know, um, hit like and subscribe. But um, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. You have a great day, 7-3.